Hello everyone, I'm Rizwan Akram here as usual in Rizwan Akram classroom. Every day I come here in classroom to learn something from my guests. Every day my guests here come as teacher. So today we have a very special guest in our classroom. It's Ali, she's Ali Kiko and we are going to learn about her and about her visit in Pakistan and about her life. So, Aliki, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me, Rizwan. Um, so, my name is Aliki Ko. I'm originally from Greece. Right now, I'm talking to you from south of France. So we are starting our, we have started our conscious community here called Conscious Gems. Uh, by profession, I'm an architect and I have been quite a bit traveler as a person. And <laughs> I like to consider myself a little bit of a free spirit. So I have had quite a lot of changes until now in countries and in works and all of that, all of that has allowed me to have a very diverse understanding of what it means work and what it means life and how we might be able to create a new type of life and a new type of work. Mm, so I'm in this stage right now, like prototyping a, a different way of, of being uh, together with other people in the co-living. And what would it mean to be in a more conscious state of awareness? So, Aliki, you have also uh, doing some work about leadership. Would you like to share something? Yes, about what? Sorry, I didn't hear you. About leadership skills uh, you have been doing working. Uh, so the funny part about leadership is that you don't really... I mean, you learn it by experience, practically. Right? You don't really go to a school and learn how to become a leader. Uh, what happens is that um, you put yourself into conditions that are, require you to be able to guide other people. And it's very tricky because people are, are difficult. Every person is a different world. And the relation between them can be very triggering, can be very difficult. Also, can be very expanding and very beautiful, though, right? So the idea of leadership from my side is like, how do we allow every person to become their own personal leader? How do you guide them towards their own light? Um, and how do you do that without imposing your own beliefs, which is very difficult actually, because by being in a leadership position, you do have an idea and a vision that's usually quite strong and that attracted in the first place, the people that are around you. How do you move from your dream into a collective dream that everybody can actually co-dream and co-create because then it comes the real power by the time it's just your dream it's one person driving the horse by the time it's like 10 or 100 people there the dream can become much bigger as you can imagine so this is right now my path and it's not easy it's it's not easy like inside the team there will be preferences there will be people yeah. who trigger you there will be people who don't do want to do anything it's going to be all types of people. Uh, so how do you navigate between that? That's, that's leadership for, for me. Uh, Aliki, uh, other aspects of your life about engineering, uh, would you like to share that what was your dream job? Or like uh, what was uh, you thinking about in your childhood? Either it was a dream job for you or you came here uh, somehow as accidentally. So I, mean, I was never the person that had a dream job. I was never the person that had a lot of prototypes and I was always wanting to find my own paths. Aliki, so, can you listen to me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure if reason doesn't have internet or I don't have internet. Anyway, <laughs> we will see very soon if he comes back. 
I want to ask you about uh, uh, your. I, I lost you, but now I can hear you again. Can you hear me? Hi. Hmm. Rizvan, can you hear me? Hello, I hope that it's fine now. Hi. I can hear okay. you now. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I'm hearing you. Uh, okay, perfect. Have you listened to my question? No, I didn't. I couldn't hear you at all. Okay, okay. Alihi, uh, would you like to share uh, about your childhood dream that either you want to be an engineer in your childhood or something else? Yeah, so I was just saying that I was never the person that had a specific profession in mind. I was never saying that I want to become like that. Actually, uh, yeah, it's very right what you're saying, Raish. So um, what, actually how I chose to become an architect is because I was realizing that I was a person that liked both and equally theory and practice. I love maths, I love the logical thinking, but I also love creativity and art. And architecture was one of the few professions that allow you to be both, actually. So it was, it was practically a very... A logical choice of what would allow me to explore both both sides to maybe understand which side I like the most because back then I was still in the mindset of you have to become good in one thing because only then you can really grow like it was this type of older thinking that we all had I think and myself also that unless you become an expert in something uh, nothing will happen in your life somehow I realized that I was practically a child of the new age that was, we are polymaths. We know a lot of things about a lot of things. And that's, that's, our, that's, our, that's our ability. And the real gift is actually to be able to combine them and create something out of them instead of getting lost in the many things. So this is our shadow. This is what you have to work when you're a polymath because you get excited with many things. And... And then you want to learn them all. And actually, you should go and learn them all. And you have to make your own opinion about them and create something that only you can see from everything that you have learned. So that's, that's, that's the path, and that's what I'm creating right now. And it's been very interesting. <laughs> so without even having a dream, I have completed many dreams that other people might have had until now in the life has been very generous with me, with all the difficulties, don't take me wrong, there was very difficult years and very difficult situations, but they allowed me to, to grow so much, so I really see them as gifts right now. Uh, Aliki, uh, there's also a spiritual uh, aspect of your personality. Would you like to share about it? That what spiritualism according to you? Mm, so I, I like to... I like to to recall the phrase that I don't even remember when it came for the first time to my mind, is that science allowed me to understand the world. Spirituality has allowed me to find a place in it. So for a very long time, uh, I had no idea why I'm here. I always had the feeling that I am here to do something, but this something was not even close to clear. And it was very torturing. It was not fun because feeling the, the need and the duty without knowing what the duty is. It's a very weird state. Um, for, for situations that happened to my life, practically an extremely stressful work that left me drained, depressed, and without a reason for being, uh, it, kick, it gave me the necessary kick to start searching in other directions that I have never thought about. I didn't even know that they exist. They were completely out of my awareness, like they were never there. But when you get into a, a dead end, you search for any type of solution. You don't care if it makes sense anymore because what you have been doing didn't bring you anywhere. And this, as you can imagine, it's not the happiest moment in the life of a person, realizing that everything that I have been trying brought me into the situation that I most definitely want to get out the fastest possible and never be back again. So then you have to really rethink your tools. 
and your processes and your approaches in life, right? And that's what I did. And I was, I would just, I posed the question, how can I make myself happy? And I have to admit, I was not believing that I can make myself happy. It was a very big goal. I just put it out there, maybe even as a limited belief that I will never make it and I will just confirm to myself that this is, I'm impossible. Uh, three, three, two years and a half later, I found myself in a state of happiness that I have never experienced before. And, and then I had to, like, to stop and understand what happened these two and a half years that I did a very deep dive into, into spirituality. And what practically happened is that I allowed myself to, to see beyond the material world and to start playing with the energy inside of me, the ways my body and my mind functions, the way I function according to what is happening into me, and really start understanding the un unseen world. So the world that we cannot touch, but we definitely know that it's there. We can all feel it. It's just other types of sensations. The spirituality for me is all this field, all everything that we cannot see, but defines our lives maybe even more than what we can see. Aliki, do you think that uh, uh, to know about yourself, Spirituality is the only way to find your passion within yourself, to find your actual goal in life. So I don't think that our purpose is individual. I think we are just an expression of consciousness. And it's very difficult to find your purpose if you're looking just at yourself. Because usually your purpose is not, has nothing to do with you. It has to do with other people. So I'm trying to recall um, somebody who has really found the purpose without becoming spiritual. And don't take me wrong, to become spiritual, you don't need to meditate, you don't need to pray, you don't need to believe even in spirituality. There are people who are extremely spiritual because they follow the, the laws of nature and of the universe without knowing they follow intuition, they follow guidance. This is being spiritual. It doesn't mean that you pray. It doesn't mean that you do any practice. These are just tools. So I haven't seen anybody who has been successful or have, has found its purpose that doesn't have these qualities. So I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, Eliki, you have explained well according to yourself. Uh, would you like to share about uh, the topic that is learning, unlearn, and relearn? Uh, either it's a process or either it's the total uh, formula for learning something or either it's your choice to adopt it or not. So we are in a, we are in a curve of humanity, right? Humanity has passed in many curves. Civilizations rise and fall all the time. We just think that it's the first time because we haven't experienced in this life before. It's happened so many times. So we are again in this, in this, we have already passed the nice curve and we are going down, right? And in this down, new types of models need to, to, to emerge. So this is particularly the unlearning. It's like what our parents were telling us was how to create this curve, but this curve doesn't work anymore. So just continue doing the same things. It will not bring you anywhere. So then you have to really go and unprogram what you have learned and understand what needs to be learned right now instead so we can grow further. So this is the process practically. And it's not an easy one, but on the other side, it's very much about remembering. It's about remembering information that we have chosen to kept away for beliefs, for cultural reasons, for who knows because it was not necessary for this uh, period of our revolution, maybe even. And just assimilate all of them. Assimilate the old information, the new information, the information that maybe we can start getting for the future, all in one path, and then learn that, right? So this is the, practically the, the, the process. And from my, from my 
point of view, it's fascinating. It's really, really fascinating. Like being an explorer myself, I love to see the infinite possibilities that comes from not having nothing set on, on stone. So when you don't have a manual, you can create a manual. That's the fun. That's the fun part, you know. We have to remember to become creators again, not just followers. Who are we following? <laughs> Aliki, um, don't you? Uh, there is another thing you have told about spirituality, and then you are saying that there is need, no need to follow. Uh, don't you think that these are uh, somehow uh, crossing each other, like? If you don't need any mentor for learning, then uh, what is meant by spirituality? That is often considering about uh, following someone or following some mentor or some uh, Sufi or something like that. Spirituality has nothing to do with mentors. Uh, the previous period of time, we needed gurus and mentors to be able to approach uh, the whole, the one, the what is, right? We needed them because we still needed them. We are in a, in a low, in a younger age as humanity, let's say. So we need somebody to show us, right? But right now we are stepping into an age that each one of us can connect directly to the Supreme. Uh, may that be whatever you want it to be. I don't like to put words there. Everybody can believe or not. Mm. We can connect directly, and this is spirituality. It has nothing to do with writings, with readings. These are good tools, but that's all. Point. You don't need them. If you can connect directly, I have many people. They, they don't read anymore. They just download information directly. They don't need to read. And I don't mean download from the internet, obviously, right? I mean direct, the, the really direct download. Uh, we can all do it. It's not, it's not a special ability. We just have just forgotten. So that's the path of remembering. Remember how do we individually connect to the whole, understand our place in the whole, and allow consciousness to talk to us and allow what needs to be manifested through us. And for that, you can have the best teacher. They don't know because it's your path. It's not there. They can give you the tools to open the doors. But what is behind the door? It's not their door. So, um, Aliki, if someone is going to download, uh, then from which section of a system a person can download such thing? Like who will guide you that open that folder and then you will download these files? Uh, if there is no mentor in your life, you may open different files and random things and maybe your recycle bin may be filled with devil, but you didn't find the original thing. So look, let's do uh, the relation of uh, the spiritual path and the life of, uh, of a person, right? When, you, when you're born, in the beginning, you need time to learn how to walk, to learn how to eat, to learn how to do things. And then you do have somebody showing you, right? But when you start learning, you start doing it yourself. I'm pretty sure you don't need it in the same time that your father was giving you the spoon or something, <laughs> right? You don't even remember how he was giving you the spoon. You were just fed. And of course, in the beginning, yeah. you do need people to show you. And in many steps, we need people. But it's a different thing to allow people to unlock doors for you when they're needed in key times. And it's a different thing to just religiously follow exactly the writings or the sayings of one specific person. Completely different. There is a lot of wisdom. I'm not discarding the wisdom at all. There are very enlightened beings uh, and more and more. Uh, but it's different to become dogmatic about even following them. Because becoming dogmatic will not allow you to become who you are. They are who they are. They have reached where they have reached. But for you to reach also, you have to start connecting with, with inside and ask for help, of course, obviously. Use tools, absolutely. But allow yourself to go further. Um, Aliki, uh, 
uh, your recent tour to pakistan uh, was the tour for spirituality was a tour for learning or was a tour for a traveler so it was a little bit of everything right it was a for hmm, <laughs> interesting question um so it was a tour for getting connected more to one specific person it was a tour to allow uh the level of awareness to rise above specific conditions it was a tour for me to get into no pakistan of course um it was a tour to meet some really beautiful people that i have talked online and uh i wanted to meet them in person uh it was a tour for many it's always a, many things for me it's never just one thing so it was all of them and all of them happened as always i can't hear you okay. aliki aliki would you like to share uh, the best part of the, your story for i think you have stayed here for three months and you have visited a lot of places you have done a lot of things and a lot of fun and a lot of new uh, horizons as well and meeting a lot of different people would you like to sh share the most interesting part of your story of the trip in pakistan you mean yep so i have to say that i i the place that i, I enjoyed the most was uh, a place that the owner himself called it uh, the belly of the whale so this is a place of mr q and it's close to abadaba and i enjoyed this this visit mostly for many different reasons right of course because the host was one of the people that we had the chance to connect further than many of the other hosts um and we had the chance to share um life stories that are very interesting and and get a little bit the understanding of how wh why some, everybody comes with this world view so where does every any everybody stands also i believe that the connections that were created in this specific um meeting uh go beyond this life so i mm, and that doesn't mean necessarily with my with myself personally uh that was the second reason and the third reason is because it is a very charming area i mean the house itself it's a very unique <laughs> place to call it like that so it's, it's a completely irrational way of building a building i don't it's very funny how it, it has become <laughs> something in this world uh and it's been preserved like that but also the area not being neither way too remote neither industrial or close to big city it had a very interesting charm so it really i would love to explore more this area there were some parts that had this special glow uh, of uh, very highly ener energetic places and then had to the chance to discover more this time but uh, i kind of feel that there's much more than it seems in that area so uh, aliki what was your perspective before coming to pakistan and after returning from pakistan how was it changed or either you have expected the same and you say that it's fine that i was expecting the same things here oh so i didn't really know what to expect i knew nothing about pakistan uh, like literally and that was the interesting part uh, i was like wow a country that i literally know nothing about let's see uh, so i came with quite an open mind to tell you the truth right like I came with a lot of trust, a lot of trust to my host also, Rehan Lawala, and um, and without a lot of expectations, which is always a good technique. Actually, it's always good to come without expectations. Uh, yeah. It ended up being a very interesting period for different reasons, for very different reasons of what I was thinking before coming, because I was thinking that I was coming for work, right? Uh, okay. But uh, I have to admit that. in the end in the end people are people you know like if you're good to them they're going to be good to you if you're bad to them you're going to be bad to you like <laughs> this rule never <laughs> fails you know <laughs> uh so yeah i guess different but same you know 
uh, LK being an architecture, what you think? Um, uh, what you think about? Like uh, we are uh, living in a such a summer summer um, area, occupied area, hot summer here. Uh, would you like to share about your expertise about uh, any uh, issues about architecture or designing of our homes? So there are many techniques that can be used to make a house more um, livable during the summer, right? And the, the most important is actually ventilation. The way we we make the houses, you don't really have ventilation passing through the through the building. Uh, the, the the difficulty is that usually this has to come at the designing phase. It's very difficult to implement after, and that goes together with actually looking a little bit further than just the initial budget, for example. So if you're only looking at making the cheapest option possible, you will end up paying it in air conditioning after, and five times more. Uh, so it's, it's a lot about think, it's a lot about long-term thinking, you know, or short-term thinking. And yeah, uh, if you don't really design it like that, it's a little bit difficult to implement it later on. Uh, not impossible, of course, Mm, but a little bit more difficult. And in the big cities, there are really few constructions that happen with this in mind because there are really few constructions that even happen for somebody to live in. Most of them, they just happen to be sell sold. So when you just make something to be sold, you don't really care, right? If the person who's selling it will be living in it, it might be a little bit different. So it might be a good technique to start putting the, the construction managers living in their places to see how it is. <laughs> uh, Aliki, another interesting thing may be you have observed or you may know it. Uh, then in Pakistan, 90% of the homes are structured without any planning from architecture or engineers. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, just build a home by only considering the mason's expert opinion um yeah uh, we always create with the level uh, of consciousness that we are in <laughs> that would be my comment <laughs> Uh, uh, Aliki, thank you so much. Better than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Aliki, a famous guest, now. <laughs> uh, you are very well known in Pakistan now after visiting <laughs> for about three months. So a lot of people <laughs> know you as, uh, as a lot of people thought that you are living in Karachi so far, but yes, you have explained that you have gone from months, here. Actually. I was living in Karachi oh. for two months. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aliki, thank you so much. You have given me the time. It's a pleasure talking to you. And it's an honor that finally we have met here. And it's nice talking to you. It's a beautiful words you have spoken to me. And spe especially the spiritual word. Uh, it's a different word for me. But however, it exists. And definitely a lot of people are practicing here. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.